Welcome back everybody to the Hero Forge painting guide and this time we are going to take a little break from painting player characters and instead we are going to paint the undead. We have our skeleton warrior here so we are going to focus on painting bone and how to weather armor. We are starting off with the armor because that is the largest surface area on the miniature and we're coating it with a mixture of Vallejo paints, Vallejo model air steel, model color black, and game color charred brown. Uh, the reason why we're mixing in the black and the charred brown is because we are going to be weathering this armor so we want to take a little bit of the sheen out of the metallic steel paint. For the highlights, we are only going to add one level of highlights and we're just stippling on some model air steel. Uh, that's because we're going to get a majority of our contrast through washes and the weathering. Now begins our weathering process and starting off with red leather which is has a color sort of like a light rust color and I have that color thinned out and I'm lightly stippling it on all over the armor. Uh, some areas it's a little heavier some a little bit lighter but this first coat it covers a good portion of the armor and it's okay if we do too much here because it's going to get toned down in the next step. Our second coat is Hall Red, which is a darker red, darker brown color. And you see that's getting more concentrated in the recesses where the rust would start and you would have older rust. So a little bit more selective where this application is still slightly random. Uh, but you can see we're covering up some of the red leather that we did before. So it's okay if we overdid the red leather a little bit at that step because we are covering it up now. Final thing is some thin black. We're using this in two ways. First, to add a dark line uh, between the all the segmented armor pieces so we get a nice crisp edge to all of them. And then also in a few of the deeper recessed areas of the armor where I figure we need a little bit uh, more contrast, putting out some thin black there. So uh, a thin line in some places and then a little stipple of black in others. Now let's move on to painting bone. And when it comes to painting bone, you have a lot of variety of colors that you can use. Anything up to almost a, a pure ivory uh, down to a dark brown. Kind of depends on how old the bone is and how it was stored. I'm going to be using a khaki today, which is a good general bone color. For our shade, I am using some thinned down leather around. Remember, keep those washes in a smooth coat. Don't let them pool too much. And after this is dry, I went back and reapplied the khaki, which is it's an optional step depending on exactly what colors you use at home. If your base color gets significantly dyed by the wash, well then just go ahead and reapply the base color and you will actually get an additional highlight through that because you have the leather brown in the recesses, the tinted leather brown khaki, and then the straight khaki. For our highlights, we are gonna be working in and working our way up to beige. And a good example here of adjusting your ratios, your paint to water ratios. Of course, you always want to thin your paint, uh, but in this situation, you wanna change it depending on what you're painting. For example, the top of the skull has that smooth, just round, area very difficult to highlight so you have these very thin paint there so you don't end up seeing any brush strokes or changes in highlights 
Uh, however, smaller areas like the bony fingers, you want uh, much thicker paint there because you need a lot more control to prevent it from running in between all the fingers. So just remember to, to adjust your ratios depending on what you're painting. On to the teeth. Again, wide variety of colors you can use. I'm using pale sand because it picks up easier on the camera. And normally for humanoids, what I recommend is not painting individual teeth. Uh, what you actually want to do is paint a, just a line going straight across. However, this is a skeleton, so maybe he's missing a couple teeth. So in that case, individual dots is fine. Final thing we are going to paint is the shield and once again we are going to weather this and we're going to go instead for a bronze looking shield uh, using brass for that actually and like we did with the armor we want to mix in a non-metallic to uh, dull it down also in this case add a little bit of green to it so that's why we have the Vallejo model color olive brown added to it. Again, with like the armor, adding a simple highlight, uh, this time using brassy brass, then a mix with steel added to it. Because this shield is actually so flat, I'm adding an additional highlight for the edge, just because we really don't have any little nooks and crannies to highlight and shade on this shield. Next comes our stippled wash, in this case, military green. Now, if this shield had a bit more detail, some more nooks and crannies, I would be adding additional washes to those deeper recessed areas to get a, a really good verdigris color. So uh, if I had them, we'd be adding some light green or light bluish green to those details, but uh, we don't in this case. So we're gonna do something a little different. To spice up our shield, I'm gonna add a very simple pattern to it. And just starting off with a dot and we're gonna draw in some lines and using royal purple and then adding black to that because I need to dull it a little bit because remember, this is all about weathering. We don't want a bright color on our shield. Once our guideline is established, just adding some little dots to the base of each of our little points and just slowly filling out those lines, doing it very slowly, trying to keep it simple, um, and just thickening them and trying to get a smooth uh, edge to all those lines. Very simple pattern, uh, kind of easy to replicate. You don't have to do some elaborate stuff to spice up a shield. Just all we have is a dot and a line here. And then once that is established, using straight royal purple to fill them in so we get a bit of a two-tone effect going on. Our painted pattern still looks a little new, so we're gonna add a dust layer using some Vallejo model color buff. Uh, once again, very thin, light coat, kind of like we did with the light rust and stippled on here or there. So you can see that really puts a film over the royal purple and fades it out a little bit. Also adding a little bit to the armor as well here and there. Not as much on the armor because we already have the rust effect going there and we don't want to cover that up. And there is our finished skeleton warrior ready for battle. Now if you noticed we didn't do a whole lot of complex techniques or layering on this project. There was no 
a dozen layers of thinned paint repeatedly applied. Instead, we relied mainly on washes and stippling, and we got a lot out of it. For example, on the chest armor, all we did was apply a base coat, do one highlight, and apply two washes and a dark line. And they were all very easily applied as well. And we got a lot of different effects going on, just using those very easy to replicate techniques. So there you go. Feel free to try a stab at doing something a little bit more dirty. Not every warrior has to be a knight in shining armor. Put them through the ringer every once in a while. Thanks for watching. See you next time.